dead bot under control. Get your dead bot under control. You know that thing of when you hear a song or bass line and it just feels like it has been with you your entire life. You haven't needed to learn it, but suddenly you need to learn it for something and you're like, Wait, is this the greatest bass line ever? My name is Ian Martin Allison for SBL, and today we are looking at one of the greatest bass lines ever. Undisputable! Bernard Edwards with the band Chic. 1979's Good Times. And if for some reason you don't know this original version, you may know it a few years later, a rap group called Sugar Hill Gang recorded it on a tune called Rapper's Delight. And this song has been so influential in terms of pop music, funk music. I mean, the best example for sure is Queen, Another One Bites the Dust. And most recently, the amazing Joe Dart playing the funkiest bass line on Three on E by Wolfpack. But today we're going to bring it all the way back to 1979, Bernard Edwards, the original version. Speaking of 1979, I have my 1979 Stingray right here. I have flats on it and a mute. Down and dirty with some B-roll. You know I got down and dirty on some B-roll. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, Stingrays in this era did have mutes that were built into the bridge that you could move up with a thumb screw here, but that material deteriorated for me completely. So I'm using the Nordy mute today. Are you ready to learn potentially the greatest bass line ever? I love the top of this track because it starts out with this super cool organ grind. <laughs> anything funkier I'm not sure and it's so cool because he is so restrained right so we're gonna start with three big fat notes on E cutting off on the eighth note so they're not gonna ring it's not this right it's sort of short notes and then we're gonna walk up and actually I believe that Bernard fretted it this way right So again, pretty staccato. And a way that you can get that staccato playing, check out this right hand thing. If you play, and then you drop your finger right down on the string, instead of just letting your left hand mute the whole thing, you can use your right hand as well. And something else I have to say is this line is based on the Dorian scale. Come here the Dorian scale. It is the second mode in the diatonic mode sequence. It doesn't really matter if you don't know what that means. Let me just show you what this is based on. This is sort of like the funk minor scale. So check it out. In E, we'll do it up here. I've got an E, an F sharp, a G, A, B, and then a natural sixth, which is that C sharp, and then a D, and an E again. differs from the natural minor, which has that flat six, a C natural. In this case, a minor scale, but with that natural six, the C sharp. Okay, so here are the first two bars on that E figure slowly. Mm, and then it gets to that A with that upbeat, right? One and a two and a three and a four and a. Ooh, a 16th note syncopation on that A makes the whole thing work, right? If it went, it would sound pretty square, right? But it doesn't. It changes to that A, the four chord, on the A uh of four, four E and A. Uh. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and A. Uh. Ooh, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and A. Uh. Uh. Oh, that's so much fun to play. Right, so then when we're at the A,
Let's slow that down. So I'm bouncing off the open A in this case and playing that F sharp to the G. Then here we have this. Oh, and that is B, open E, F sharp, G, back to E again. So we have. And sometimes I do this thing with my right hand when I'm not playing with a drummer or metronome where I sort of want to feel the backbeat. And all I'm doing is just dropping my hand down onto the bass. And that creates essentially sort of a facsimile of the snare drum. And honestly, it really helps me feel these backbeat grooves. So that line really is the song, right? But then when it goes into the verse, there's an even more simple part that's so cool. Let's check it out. Happy days are here again. The time is right for making friends. Let's get together. How about a quarter to ten? Come tomorrow. Let's all do it again. Boys will be both. Better let them have the talk. doesn't do a big fill at these moments. Gosh, there are all these moments, right, in this tune that he could go, <laughs> right, like he could fill up with a bunch of notes because he was a monster player. <laughs> but I love the restraint right there at the end of that. I was so tempted to play some fill, but it's not the right thing, right? We're gonna focus on that simple transition. So if we take a look at this verse, right, we're gonna just slow it down a bit. We have this. I mean, it takes a lot of restraint and a lot of intentionality to play a part that clean and subtle and just unwavering. I love that about his playing. There's a really cool thing that he's playing in this, a ghost note. And if you don't know what a ghost note is, sometimes people call these dead notes as well. All it means is just when you play a note that's muted, that doesn't have a fret associated with it, right? It's just a note that is rhythmic instead of attached to a pitch. So when he's playing, from the A here, that real subtle sneaky rhythm thing, right? From the A, right there. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So the A uh, before the one, the four E and a one, four E and a uh is the ghost note, one. The note is the downbeat. I love that stuff. Okay, then in the original version of the tune, about halfway in, there is just this bass break that lasts a long time. And I love what he does. He just plays that main ostinato over and over with a couple of cool little rhythmic variations, maybe a couple of slides, but no big pyrotechnic moments. It's almost like the anti-bass solo, right? Where it breaks down, spotlight goes to you, and you just play the same thing, right? And it highlights how cool this bass line is. And I have to believe that when this was on the radio, like some dudes heard it right from the Sugar Hill Gang and this part broke down where there's nothing else going on but really bass and drums and it was the perfect thing to rap over. Hip, hop, the but then of course the accolades come right and you're on the big stages and yeah, Bernard shredded it up a bit in that moment live. Check this out.
Now, if you didn't have your base while watching this video, or if this stuff whizzed by too fast at the bottom of the screen, never fear. We've got you. The amazing team at SBL, of course, made a PDF workbook located in the description of the video all the transcriptions of the baselines there. You can download it, it's absolutely free. Hey, this series is rolling. We're on episode four. I've gotten so many great ideas from you, from the base community, about what you wanna see on this channel and specifically in this series. And I'm asking you again, what do you wanna see, right? Leave it in the description below. Who do you think needs to be featured? What band, song, bass player, artist? let me know. I love making these videos so much. And if you enjoy watching them, please like the video, consider subscribing. And if you haven't already, check out that free 14 day trial over at scottsbasslessons.com. It is a wonderful community and the best way to level up your bass playing. I have been Ian Martin Allison for SBL. We'll see you in the shed.